We have 26 London boroughs on board um, and various other partners, including commercial ones. Um, and we've turned it into this, this campaign, which is aiming to tackle diet, so uh, a more plant-rich diet for the capital, and uh, help Londoners reduce the food waste that they've got at home. So that's where it's come from. I'm also thrilled to introduce Ellie Moore from Re London. Ellie's going to tell us all about the exciting campaigns and initiatives the city's launching to empower Londoners to embrace the circular economy. Ellie, welcome to the show. Hi. We've got a me. few questions for you. Great. Ali, hi. Um, you work for Re London, but you used to be known as the London Waste and Recycling Board. Tell us about the brand renaming. Yeah, so that happened about two years ago now, and it feels like we've been called Re London forever. Um, so it happened because the London Waste and Recycling Board didn't really represent any more what we are, who we are as an organisation, what, we, what we're passionate about. So um, although we still do very much work on waste and recycling, we were increasingly working on the wider circular economy, moving up the waste hierarchy, um, and the name no longer really represented who we were, what we did or why we did it. Um, and it also, um, we had an issue which was that we had been developing programmes and a variety of different programme brands and websites over the years. We'd become increasingly fragmented and our stakeholders were a little confused about who we were and how it all fitted together. So it's given us a really great integrated platform to talk about the whole circular economy, not just waste and recycling, but everything to do with resource use and the climate emergency. Oh, wow. So in, in terms of what you do then, um, can you tell us something about how you influence the choices that Londoners make? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we London is, it, we have three core straight stakeholder groups that we deal with. We work with local government, we work with businesses, and we work with citizens. Um, and in each of those areas, we have different ways of uh, enabling kind of better choice making, if you like. Um, so with our local authority team, they do a lot of work around things like flats recycling projects, where they remodel the way that recycling services work on estates or uh, in different contexts. So they do a variety of different projects and we use better behavioural science to inform that and help people make choices that we want them to make rather than ones that are easy and, and not necessarily the most uh, sustainable. Um, in the business side of things, we work with small businesses to, to scale them and to help them amplify and talk about the products and services that they're, that they're uh, creating. Um, so we're providing more choices for people to buy um, circular products and services in the city by doing that. And then on the citizen side, we run a whole range of communications campaigns, um, talking to them about sustainable food choices, about circular textiles, about recycling, about repair, about a whole variety of things. So it's a really collaborative effort. Um, what sort of campaigns are you overseeing at the moment? Um, so we have a couple of food campaigns. We have, so London Recycles, which is our, our sort of core campaign that we run on behalf of the mayor and the London boroughs. Um, and as part of that, we run a thing called Repair Week every year. We've just finished our third year, which has been extremely successful. Um, we have um, Love Not Landfill, which is a, a circular fashion or sustainable fashion campaign targeted at 16 to 24 year olds with the goal of getting them never to throw their clothes in the bin. Um, and then we have um, a campaign called Food Wave, which is an EU funded one, collaborating with 30 partners across Europe can you tell us about your new campaign, Eat Like a Londoner? Of course, yes. Yeah. So it's a really interesting campaign that's come from a very interesting place. We It started when we presented the, the London's Food Footprint Report at COP in Glasgow. Um, and that was a report looking at the consumption-based emissions associated with our food behaviours in London. So a material flow analysis, food coming in, moving around, getting thrown away, you know, so the waste and carbon hotspots. Um, around the city associated with food and it identified a couple of scenarios um, that could really help and one was diet and one was household food waste prevention and so that turned into discussions and a, a, a consensus, an extraordinary consensus actually amongst councils, amongst the, the, the GLA, um, with you guys, with the Anna MacArthur Foundation who've been really supportive throughout um, that we actually needed a new campaign for the whole of London um, and the London Council's One World Living programme kind of initiated it and we've crowdfunded it, which is the first time we've ever done that. Um, and so we have 26 London boroughs on board um, and various other partners, including commercial ones. Um, and we've turned it into this, this campaign, which is aiming to tackle diet, so uh, a more plant-rich diet for the capital and uh, help Londoners reduce the food waste that they've got at home. So that's where it's come from. 
So Ali, how does the campaign actually work? Who are you targeting here? So we're targeting 21 to 44 year olds um, and in particular families with young children at home because they're the people that we've identified as the highest food wasters in the capital. Um, and we have created a hub of really rich content that we've pulled in from all over the place. So for the first time ever on a campaign like this, we have not decided to create all of our own content. We've realised that actually you're looking for tips about reducing food waste or cooking incredible kind of plant rich meals. It's all out there already. There are billions of people producing this content to probably to a higher level than we can on our very limited budget. Um, so we've created a hub and we're creating social media and advertising to kind of point people at the hub and hopefully encourage people to sign up to follow content creators on Instagram, for instance, who the minute that they click to follow one of those influencers, they're getting nudged two, three, four times a week with new content to help them do the things that we want them to do. Whereas we can only really afford to advertise to them once, twice, maybe three times a year. So that's the goal is to get people connecting with all of that content that's already out there and start to kind of change their habits that way. You work across local government, citizens and businesses. What would you say was the split? Well, organisationally, it's about a third, a third, a third. Um, for me personally, I run um, behaviour change campaigns directed to citizens, but I also do communications to businesses and local government. I think my balance is probably about 60% citizen, 60-70% citizen and 30-40% and business. Um, but organisationally, we do things, we do quite a lot with, with businesses and local authorities. We combine it together. So for instance, a recent project, we worked with the London Borough of Bexley and connected them up with Olio, the food waste app, and Kitch, another app. Um, and we worked collaboratively with them to advertise those two apps quite intensively in a particular neighbourhood in Bexley. And then we evaluated what impact it had on food waste and food waste behaviours. So that in that instance, we kind of, you know, you take, if you, you start taking a whole system view and you talk to all the different partners that may potentially be involved with it and you, you get a very different experience and a different outcome. So we do, we connect it all up together all the time in different ways.